welcome to the Fortress of Doom. It's not the Legion of Doom or the Fortress of Solitude. For some reason, it's just the Fortress of Doom. <laughs> so, is he the only one who lives here? Y yes, along yes. along with Vega, his sentient AI he saved from the last game. Not Cortana. Yes, not Cortana. You mentioned Cortana for some reason, like the previous cutscene with Doom Guy just looking up at that humongous avatar. I was waiting for him to scream Athena for some reason. Maybe it's because <laughs> I just played God of War uh, for the PS2 video. But I, I got a, some pretty big God of War vibes just looking at that scene. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, this is the only kind of news broadcast I do because they take a bit of time. But this one, yeah. they officially call him Doom Guy. Doom Slayer. Yes, but they yeah the same word Doom Guy as you sometimes refer to. Uh. <laughs> and he jumps for joy. <laughs> so if I remember correctly, um, in the in the last level, the co company that we the evil Mars company, I don't remember. Mm -hmm. They like yes, UAC. are happy that the demons are here now because they've got no, like, they're not. They're not. You but know, there was there was the, the broadcast, the, which is like we're happy for our demon overlords of, or whatever. Well, that it was corrupted by the hell This, yeah. this whole oh, like okay. having a hideout central hub area thing gives me uh, somewhat unpleasant uh, flashbacks to Shadow Warrior Two. It's not very big. It's just here for you to choose upgrades and then you just warp. To yeah, the I know. Level. It's it's not that in Shadow Warrior Two the hub was a bad idea. It's more that Shadow Warrior Two was a bad game as a whole and making me think of it as a bad idea. Um, it was a loot grind nightmare of nonsense. I don't like it. It's, it yeah, the magical runes. How grindy would you say this game is if you're trying to get all of the upgrades? Not terribly I... grindy, because at the, at the end of each level, before you have your exit portal, the game gives you fast travel. Oh, okay, so that's can, good. So you can zip yeah. over to any segment of the level you that's want. That's helpful. And there's, the secrets you it's, missed. it's very generous with its fast travel points, so you can basically teleport right next to whatever secret you need okay. to collect. That's, okay, that, I like that a lot. That's good. Um, it feels like the like while this game might have design choices that are questionable, the design choices that are questionable are more like annoyances than like straight-up black marks against the game. So Yeah, uh, except for the swimming small uh, I thought you were going to say the marauder the swimming Ugh. there's the swimming marauder the marauder is the marauder is weird but we'll save the marauder for when we actually get there I can't oh, yeah, think of a single example of a first person game with swimming in it where I actually liked it uh yeah, oh I, god I'm struggling I, as, as much well. as I as much as I praise this game the swimming is the one thing that I'm like really why <laughs> wow yeah. are you saying that the water level in a video game is bad hey there Sometimes. Are, there are good water levels <gasps> Okay, you know what? I'm actually one thing that I um, that I'm already really happy about is this level. I mean, I guess it's gray, Visual but variety, you mean? yeah, but like, look, there's like green, a green and blue hint, and it's hard for mm -hmm. me to think of anything regarding the new dooms and not think of red and brown. So like, I'm yeah. already really liking that this is the second because <laughs> the the last game it kind of stuck to like when you went to a new level, it was connected it was, to the last one. Yeah, and it was uh, very much staying true to what Doom 1 and 2 was, yeah. which is you're either on a space station or you're in hell. Those were your options. Yeah. yeah. Although and in this one, yeah, uh, go ahead. I'll Lewis. say that in Doom 2016's case, staying too true to that did somewhat hurt the aesthetic a bit because um, just from a visual style standpoint, Doom 2016 had a more, re more realistic and therefore less vibrant color palette. So yeah. it did get a bit boring after a little while in a way that Dooms 1 and 2 didn't necessarily have a problem with. Um, so more color variety is definitely welcome here. Yeah, with the exception of like the final couple levels, every level is aesthetically different in a way. And I, I really like it. They went crazy with the art design in this game. Mm. Uh, or art direction. So that's definitely one place where Doom Eternal has improved over Doom 2016. Oh boy, it's time for a new demon gargoyles, which are just imps that fly. I, I, I do like this ruins uh, aesthetic here. It, it, it puts me in the mind of gothic gargoyles and stuff, which is a good place to go if you want a demon-y aesthetic. Demon-y. Demon-y. What? It also, you know what, it also, maybe this is just, you know, my catholic upbringing um but like it it has 
<laughs> like, okay, look, when you when you grow up Catholic, the shit never washes off. <laughs> yeah, okay. I, I can yeah. vouch for that. I'm, I, um, I was there, so I can attest to that. Yeah, um, but, like, it, it makes me think of, like, you know, like, churches, like, it, a uh, gothic, I guess. Uh, did somebody already say gothic? Probably. And, yeah. um, I don't know, it's, it's fitting for a game about demons, I guess. <laughs> Is the thing. That's basically what I said, except less funny because you didn't say demony. Demony? Okay. <laughs> well, um. <laughs> when are you gonna learn to just make up words, Ted? <laughs> Listen, I can barely talk as long using as real you, words. As long as you sound smart, people will buy anything. <laughs> That's people, my problem. <laughs> people, when the people want to sound smart, they talk loudly, right? Yes, Correct. Ryan, I'm the smartest! <laughs> The smartest one here. Blood punch. Blood punch. Acquired. Blood punch acquired. Yes. <laughs> Blood punch. Yeah. If you kill enough demons, you get a. Whenever you do the melee attack, it will send out a shockwave. Ah. Yeah. Basically. Uh, nice. For every two demons you kill, it supercharges your melee, and just yeah, it does like that. that. Oh, oh, nice. That's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So a nice little limited use melee super attack then. Kind of. Wow, that thing has m something that rewards something that rewards because it's that. Gameplay, basically. Yeah, there's there's a lot of mechanics baked into the Doom 2016 engine, which basically rewards you for keeping at it hard and fast as much as you want, um, instead yeah. of being slow and cautious. Like you know, you kill it. Well, I mean, the whole the yeah, enemies you get health thing. Yeah. Is, it's designed to make sure you keep fighting instead of. Ducking yeah. for cover behind a wall and cowering until your enemies. Yeah, the more uh, enemies drop, more health. Uh, the more, uh, more uh, the, the more the, the more life. injured you are, the more health they drop. And when yeah. you do the glory kill, which you need to get up close to do, they drop even more health. So, keeping yourself alive rude. involves aggression. Yeah, and I find that even in in a game like this or uh, 2016, that is very important. You know, it, it, every kill, everything you do needs to have a sense of gratification. Yeah. Uh, to I mean, going. there is definitely a place for those kind of games that are more cautious in terms yeah. in, in nature in terms of how you're supposed to approach a situation, but Doom was right. never it, quite that. And I think as long as you establish that like minute or at least in the first hour of the game, then that's fine. Oh know? yeah, you get the right mood going, that but, stuff can be really effective. You know. But don't like but don't make like the first level of the game like action Packed, like putting my foot up my the ass of like demons, and then the second level put me in a stealth. Second, you know? it's like, <laughs> oh jeez, this is not what you told me was going to be the game at all. That action figure looks really good. I wish they made action figures that nice in the real world. I'm they sure, really I'm sure someone, got someone, armor like I'm sure someone yeah. will make them for good action yeah, figures. So. Uh, no, no, action wait, they figures, do. not I mean, just it, statues. You should be concerned if the third game is just nothing but Funko Pops. God, they already are Funko Pops. The only good no. Funko Pop will be the last one they make. Well, I am glad that they have different collectible <laughs> figures to get rather Jesus than just... In, in the first game, it was recolors of the same one. Yeah. Uh, the only good Funko dude. Pop is the one no one buys. Yeah. Uh, Wouldn't that make it a bad Funko Pop, though? Because nobody wanted it. I'm bitter. I, I like games that have... <laughs> I like games that have collectible figures of things, like the frickin' gotcha figures in Shenmue or something. Actual 3D figures and not just items in your inventory. Thank you. Um, Can I uh, make a point of saying that the map in this game is way better than the map in the first one? Like a lot, a lot better. Wait, the I first game or 2016? The the 2016. Okay. I don't even know if the first. I don't even know if the first Doom has a. Yeah, it I can did and it does. sucked. I can see it. It looks like they they just ran with the we're gonna copy Metroid Prime's map system idea from Doom 2016 and actually decided to evolve that map system for a change which is a novel concept really, evolving things rather than just copying them wholesale why not? Oh come on <laughs> You're horrible like at aiming grenades off, and <laughs> I am going to give you shit for, for, for being horrible at aiming grenades because these are grenades that you shoot out of a launcher rather than actually throwing which is always a headache but um, well, what I should be using is um, the mod for the shotgun. That is oh. the um, the uh, sticky bombs, which work as grenades, basically. Extra life activated. Shame. Yeah. Shame. I don't claim to be good at these games. I would like it if it like did like a little robot voice, just extra life activated. Doom guy literally too angry to actually die. 
Ah, you got him that time. Good. Dead. Yep. Oh, Christ, we're already in one word commentary, and this is only part... This is, uh... Three. Three. <laughs> wow, where, that's Dead. a new record! Uh, Does it? <laughs> Doom jump. That's probably <laughs> how it would go if the actual Doom guy were here commentating with us. Instead of this So, Mr. Guy, well, no, how do you, you feel say about anything. this level? Dude, That'd jump. be the <laughs> easiest fucking audio thing to edit, because he, doesn't, he doesn't say anything. No. <laughs> it's just... No, he talks in this game. Does he talk in this game? Really? Uh, in, like, one or two cutscenes. <laughs> well, like, for... Spoilers, God. Oh, well, he's... <laughs> what happened to that caco? What? what I don't <laughs> know. Does he have, like, the occasional, like, non-dialogue dialogue that, like, Joker from Persona 5 has or something? No, he actually talks. Oh, like full sentences? It's like a, a, like, a, like an actual voice actor, it's yes. A, it's a flashback scene. He doesn't talk during the, like, modern time, Oh, I guess. So, you get an idea of what he was like back in the day, but yeah. maybe he's, like, way different now, for all you know. Yeah. Because okay. it is technically accurate. Uh, like, in between chapters, it would have, like, this wall of text in the old games, and Doomguy would oh, yeah. speak in those sometimes. Yeah. Um, so, I guess it, it's not like he was ever permanently mute just as soon as he came back to this universe the i don't know subtitles say grunt <laughs> like in the, in the past during his more naive days it would be naive grunt <laughs> rebellious grunt I feel like this game also is a little bit more stingy with ammo because I've seen a lot oh, of times. Oh yes, you because have the the, ammo. the game wants you to use it. the chainsaw is not completely limited ammo anymore. There is always one that's always going to be refilling, yeah. so it wants you to constantly be using the chainsaw on smaller enemies to refill your ammo. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> so the idea was that at the uh, for 2016, a lot of people just stuck to the super shotgun and gauze cannon, which is fair because they they're, the best weapons. they're really good weapons. Um, but they're like, okay, we need to, <laughs> we need to we make need, sure we, that people we, use other weapons. I put my, so, my heart and soul into this noisy cricket. You just like, they oh, yeah. they limited <laughs> the ammo and made you lean a little bit more on the uh, chainsaw in order to encourage players to use more weapons. Okay, yeah, that's sensible. Well, my my mind you, certain weapons still use you know the same ammo types. Yeah, um, just like old Doom. So, yeah, it, it's a sensible design choice. I mean. Every series eventually seems to have that one thing that gets overused by players because it's just so much better than everything else, like the metal blades or something. So at some point, the designers have to look at that, realize that it's a design flaw, and do something about it. I do like this wall climbing. See, they, they wanted to make people use the super shotgun less, but as we'll see later, they gave the super shotgun a grapple hook attachment. Which makes people use it even more. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Which, ironic, which ironically, I don't use very much. It seems like that's a one step forward, two step back kind of situation. <laughs> sort of, yes. Well, I mean, it does at least encourage you to experiment with, with other weapons earlier on, so maybe you'll find other weapons that you like. But, um, yeah. I do like the different add-ons that they have. Like, it seems like this game has a flamethrower, which is good. Which you can add yeah. to, like, the list of, like, ten total games with good flamethrowers. Well, uh, the flamethrower is just kind of a belch that does, like, minor chip damage, but what happens when you light them on fire is they drop ammo when you shoot them. Oh. Uh, nice. Yeah, so, um, the chainsaw is how you get ammo back quickly, glory kills for health, and then the flamethrower for armor. Oh, I see. So... It's, it's it seems all about, like, like balancing what resources you need. Seems like you whenever need with your Classic combat. Doom had a terrible weapon, they just decided to make it a get other things item. Um, yeah, it's like yeah, people were so happy about the chainsaw because conceptually using a chainsaw is cool. But if you've ever played Classic Doom, the chainsaw is fucking awful. Don't use it. <laughs> <laughs> it's melee in a sprite-based it... 3D game. Don't. Yeah. <laughs> Depth perception it, does not, not exist. <laughs> Uh, you know what melee attacks were in Classic Doom, apart from the chainsaw? Just brass knuckles with spikes on them. It wasn't very fun. That's not cool! <laughs> I mean, it, it might have been cool in a 3D game where you can... Oh. Oh. <laughs> <What's that>? Oops. <laughs> what, did your, what, did your arm get tired? I don't know. <laughs> Accidentally hit the <laughs> let go button. Um, the... Uh, um, in a 3D game, where you have depth perception, maybe 
and some visual three-dimensional feedback to your punches, a melee attack isn't isn't bad. But in a 2D game, melee attacks are kind of, well, I say 2D, a sprite-based 3D game, where both you and your enemy are sprites, there isn't much you can do in terms of visual feedback to give the melee attacks a satisfying feeling. That that was a problem in the old Elder Scrolls games, it was a problem in the, in the old Doom games, it's a problem in basically every game that was ever made in that style, no matter how appropriate the melee attacks were for the genre. So, yeah, just stick to the guns in classic Doom. I'm going to assume the armor he's wearing is constraining his torso to some degree because his <laughs> arms are disproportionately huge. Oh, it's, well, you know, arm day is the most important day. It's partially because the armor on his arms bulks him up, but yeah. Never skip the gun show, baby! <laughs> I mean, Okay, so is this the guy whose head we ripped off? No. I mean, no. if you look, if, <laughs> no. if you look, hey, I didn't really if like. If you look that. at what you can see of Doom Guy's arms, like between the armor pieces, where you could see his skin, his physique doesn't look all that ridiculous. But he's got all this thick armor on top of that, so he looks a bit overly bulky <laughs> when he's got his armor on. That's understandable. Go for I mean, Doom Guy. In the I mean, he's basically the... Chris Redfield. If Chris Redfield had three-inch thick armor on on top of his on top of his boulder punching muscles, so. Is Chris, is Chris wearing a fridge? Yeah. I don't think that Chris, there's, they make armor big enough for Chris Redfield to wear. <laughs> Probably not. Well, if you don't, if you don't like this, if you don't like this Doom guy suit, you can unlock the classic Doom suit and the uh, Prager suit from 2016. Wait, you, you can unlock the classic Doom guy suit? Yes. That w mm -hmm. Yeah, I can imagine because it always did. <laughs> um. <laughs> I, mean, I don't, I don't wear it, but. Yeah, I won't. Uh, I won't wear it, but we will at least see it at the future part in Doom Eternal. So see you all next time.